Here's 20 FL Studio hacks that producers need to know. Denoise with Edison. All right, as always, let's get started with some chords. I use this a lot for vocal recordings, especially on hot summer days when I have my fan or AC running in the background. First, you're going to want to select the portion of the recording that is just noise. I personally use the spectrum view for this, but you can use the waveform view. It doesn't matter. Then right click on this thing that looks like a toothbrush, highlight the entire sample, left click the brush, hit accept, and you're left with a much cleaner sounding recording in just a few clicks. All right, as always, let's get started with some chords. If you bring up the channel sampler and right click on the waveform, you can switch the display to show spectrum view or multi-channel left-right signals. The multi-channel display is especially useful as a visual tool that allows you to quickly identify where things are panned in a mix just by looking at the playlist. The waveform on the bottom is what's coming through the right speaker and the top represents the left speaker. Right click on a mixer channel and click separator to add separators between groups of instruments. Doing this makes your project look a lot cleaner and it's a lot easier to work with, especially if you leave the project for a few days or months and come back to it later. You'll thank yourself for being organized. Customize the look of the mixer. You can make mixer channels smaller or larger depending on your preferences. Note that the extra large preset comes with the added benefit of displaying the effect slots on each channel. Using this layout could save you time because you don't have to select a specific mixer channel first in order to access the target effect. Bonus tip, you can click this little waveform icon in the top left of your mixer if you want to replace the volume meter with a waveform visualizer. In FL Studio, there are some hidden effects and instruments you may not have been aware of. Well, that's only kind of true. They're not really new hidden effects, they're just patcher presets that combine effects and VSTs that already exist within FL Studio to create a new instrument or new effect with additional functionality that isn't available in the regular stock selection of plugins. An example of this is the mid-side EQ. I use a mid-side EQ on every master, just to cut side information on the low end to keep it sounding tight. Tight, tight, tight. If I knew early on that I could do this with stock plugins, it would have saved me money at the start of my music production career. You might already be aware that you can clone an entire effects chain by right-clicking a mixer channel, selecting Save Mixer Track State As, and dragging and dropping it into your target channel. But did you know that this also works with individual effects? Say that you don't want the entire effects chain, you just want this EQ curve. You can select Save Preset As and drag and drop it onto your desired channel and it just adds that one effect onto the effects chain without interfering with your other effects. Say you have a sample like this that has some empty space at the start. By using this double-sided arrow icon and holding down the Alt key, you can drag the sample to the left to get rid of the empty space. It's a lot faster and cleaner than using the Cut tool. Using the F2 key, you can quickly rename things instead of right-clicking and selecting Rename and Color. It works in the mixer, playlist, and channel rack. My favorite short keys are C for Cut, P for Pencil Tool, and B for Paint. There's also S for Slip, Y for Playback, and Z for Zoom, but I rarely ever need those tools. Alternatively, if you're bad at remembering things, you can simply right-click on your mouse and scroll your mouse wheel, and it will cycle through all of the playlist tools. Another option is to click F3. It will bring up this menu where you can select your desired tool or access the main menu without having to move your mouse to the top right of the playlist window. Instead of clicking to switch between the pattern and song modes, press L on your keyboard to quickly switch between the two. You probably know that you can use Control A to select everything, but did you know that Control D deselects everything? You can use the tab key to quickly cycle between nested windows. If you want to select multiple notes, hold down Ctrl and Shift, then left click on your mouse and drag to highlight the desired notes. Hold down the Ctrl key while scrolling your mouse wheel to quickly zoom in and out when working in the playlist or piano roll. You can also scroll up and down by holding the Alt key and scrolling your mouse wheel in a similar way. But be careful, in the piano roll this only works if you're off to the side by the scroll bar or piano or down below by the event editor. Scrolling in this way in the middle of the piano roll will alter the event editor target value on whichever note you're closest to. If you don't know music theory or scales, this might be of some use. Say you have a chord progression like this. The last chord in our case contains notes that are outside of the scale we're using, but if we don't know music theory, maybe we can't recognize that as readily. 
you can use Alt-K on your keyboard to snap the notes to any scale you want. For me though, I typically only use Alt-K as a quick way to lay down a kick. I copy and paste my 808 pattern to my kick and use Alt-K to limit the note range to one. Here are two ways to make your melody sound more realistic. With chord progressions, you can use Alt-S to strum the chords. This adds a bit of realism, but this is always gonna lead to the notes playing in an upward or downward direction, which is only slightly more realistic than having them all play perfectly on the grid in unison. Another more involved method is using Shift-M to select random notes, then using the scroll wheel on your mouse while holding down the shift key to slightly offset the timing of the notes. This used in conjunction with Alt-R to randomize velocities can be a very powerful tool to provide your melodies with a much more humanized feel. Some VSTs like Omnisphere take up a lot of computing power. One way around this is to simply export the melody, but this has the downside of not allowing you to alter individual notes later on if you change your mind about something. Another option you have is to create a direct wave instrument. Direct wave allows you to replicate the sounds of almost anything. The more samples you have of an instrument at different velocities and keys, the more accurate the recreation will be. But this will also lead to larger file sizes, so be aware of this if you have limited hard drive space. If you want to sidechain a kick to your bass, typically you route the kick to the bass channel and use a compressor to reduce the volume of the bass by a certain amount every time the kick plays. There are a few other ways to achieve the same effect. One is to use an automation clip of the volume, then copy and paste the kick pattern to the automation clip in the channel rack. This could also be done with a high pass filter but I personally see these methods as being overly involved with little to no improvement over the method I personally prefer. Sure, they offer a lot more control over the ADSR envelope, but I think it's totally unnecessary in most cases. First, it's important to understand the problem we're trying to solve. The main reason I don't like sidechaining the kick to the bass is because a kick's duration is usually long enough to duck out more bass than necessary. My solution to this is to use a short duration sound, like a snare, and sidechain that to the bass channel, but unlink it from the master so the listener can't hear it when it plays. Listen to the difference between the kick and snare being sidechained. If you've been working on beats for long enough, you'll know that sooner or later you're going to end up with a bunch of unused sounds in your channel rack from ideas that didn't pan out. This clutter can be really frustrating to sift through and delete manually, so much so that you probably don't see the point in bothering. However, there's an easy way to get rid of unused sounds in FL Studio. If you go to Tools, Macros, select Unused Channels, then press Alt-Delete on your keyboard, this will delete all of the sounds in your project that currently aren't being used. If you make an automation curve for an effect and you want to use the same automation curve on another effect, you don't have to redraw the entire curve from scratch. Simply click on the upper left corner of the automation clip that you want to copy and select Articulator Tools, Copy State. Then click the upper left of your target clip, select Articulator Tools, and Paste State. That easy. If you're working with an 808 that sounds good but it's not quite a perfect fit for your beat, try editing it in the sample editor. Give it a shorter duration with the out knob, distort it with the boost knob, or shift the frequency balance with the EQ knob. Let me know if you found any of these tips helpful in any way. And hit that like button if you learned something new. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.